It's a better day. Today, we're going to be talking about fair-minded people. To be fair-minded, we must examine both sides of an issue before forming an opinion. People have a right to embrace a view that's different to your view or your interests. Receptive to new ideas. That's how we must be. That's how we learn and grow. We should not be intolerant towards those who hold a different view or a different opinion to our own. It's right to be courteous and polite and listen or read what another person or people have to say on an issue. You also have the right and the choice to respond or not to get involved in an argument. In an age where there is growing religious intolerance and indifference to religion, it is essential that there are fair-minded people on both sides of the divide. Fair-minded people would not want to silence the voice of Christianity or any other religion for that matter, just because they themselves hold different values and ways of life. And the fair-minded among the Christians would naturally continue to advocate or promote their religious beliefs rather than retreat into oblivion. Many would say that if your view is in the minority on a certain subject, you should, for the sake of being polite, compromise and go with the major opinions. This suggestion expects people or individuals to abandon their beliefs and standards and principles for the sake of reaching concession or harmony and settling the argument, dispute or difference. St. Augustine captured that approach when he said, Right is right, even if no one is doing it. Wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it. The truth and power of that quote does not mean we must be hateful towards those who hold different opinions to ours. There are two other aspects of fair-mindedness I'll talk about and then I'll close. The first includes feelings and tastes and vested interests. This extends to the feelings and vested interests and opinions of those we care about, like family and friends and community and country. Consider the following in relation to feelings and vested interests. How fair-minded are you when it comes to your opinions on the breakdown of marriages and families, violence against women, same-sex marriages, or poor health services? The other aspect of fair-mindedness is making sure that we have clear meanings to words and expressions that we use when we formulate our opinions, or we trap ourselves in wrong interpretations and vagueness. How fair-minded are you when it comes to your opinions on gender, workplace diversity, poverty among children, suicide among the young, rising individual debt levels? Fair-mindedness. Ah, an interesting subject, a lofty concept that makes you think. Are you fair-minded people? Are you a fair-minded person? Thank you for listening. Please like this video, share, subscribe and comment. Until the next time, this is Joel's Place in the Spiritual Lounge. Thank you very much.